The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, starring the entire Nelson family. Here is Ozzie, who plays the part of Ozzie Nelson. And, of course, his lovely wife, Harriet, as Harriet Nelson. The older of the Nelson boys, David, appears as David Nelson. And his younger brother, the irrepressible Ricky, played by Ricky Nelson. The Nelson's next-door neighbor, Thorny, is played by Don DeFore. Who's that in the closet? Don't be scared, Mom. It's me, your son, Ricky. Oh, Ricky, get up and take that skeleton suit off. You'll have it worn out by the time Halloween gets here. I'm just looking for my skeleton hands. Well, you won't find them in there. You come on, get up and take that suit off. Gives me the willies anyway. Oh, What's the trouble? Well, take a look on the floor of the closet. What is... Is that a dog in there? No, you better take another look. That happens to be your small son. Well, how about that? I could have sworn some dog left his bones in there. <laughs> Me, I'll say, huh, Pa? Yes, you're scary, all right. Aren't you rushing the season a little low? Halloween isn't quite here. I'm just getting all my bones together. <laughs> they were painted on the suit. Oh, no, the hands come separate. Do you mean to tell me they have hands with those outfits? Well, sure. I guess you've never seen a real-life skeleton. No, come to the I guess I never have. And I'll gladly forego the pleasure, thank you. You're welcome. It's a neat outfit, huh, Pop? Yeah, like I say, it's funny scary, boy. You think anybody will recognize me? Well, you sure had me fooled. Hi, Mom. Hi, Pa. David? Guess who I am? Oh, brother. Darn, <laughs> how'd you guess? <laughs> What have you got there, dear? Oh, just some stuff for a Halloween party at school. I'm the treasurer. Oh, I didn't know you were going to have a Halloween party at school. Well, we're just going to dress up and play some games. Oh, that sounds like fun. School parties always are. You said it. We get out of study. Yeah, Halloween's a lot of fun for kids. And don't you like Halloween, Pa? Oh, sure, but you know, as you get a little bit older, you get kind of tired of that stuff. You mean going to parties and playing games and stuff? Yeah, see, there are certain traditional and seasonal games like pin the tail on the donkey and ducking for apples, and they get a little stale as the years go by. We make up a lot of new stuff, Pop. What do you mean, make up new stuff? We bring the old-fashioned games up to date. Well, that sounds interesting. How do you bring pin the tail on the donkey up to date? Or shouldn't I ask? Oh, <laughs> well, sure. You draw a big picture of the teacher's face in the blackboard. Well, I don't get the connection. Well, then we play the game. And what do you call it? Draw the mustache on the teacher. Well, I have a hunch the teacher's going to walk in one of these days and you'll have a new game. I am not Salvador Dali on the blackboard 50 times. <laughs> oh, no, Pop. Our teacher was the one who made up the game. You know, sometimes this modern psychology puzzles me a little. They call it relieving suppressed desires. Yeah, I guess it does it best. How's it seem to work? Heck, I don't even know what it means. It's probably part of the psychology. You and Mom go on a Halloween party this year, Pop? Yeah, I suppose the girls will get together and whip up some sort of a deal at the last minute. They usually do. Gives them an excuse to dress up a bit. Well, as a matter of fact, we were talking about that yesterday, and I think we'll skip it this year. Well, I'm sure you won't get any objection from the men. Personally, I think it's about time we gave Halloween back to the kids anyway. <laughs> well, it'll save us a lot of trouble. Trying to drag you guys out of the house to a party is no fun either. I like going to parties. <laughs> oh, boy! Hey, stay out of that, Ricky. Hey, what is this white stuff? It's paint for the faces. Hey, neat, boy. Leave it alone. That's for the party at school. You put this on my face and look just like a skeleton. Hey, you cut that. Let me see it. Well, gee, Pop, that's for the party at school. I bought it with the class money. Oh, that's okay. I'll only use a little of it. Gee, I can see the headlines now. Boy uses school funds to turn brother into skeleton. <laughs> I'll give you a little extra change if you need it. Why am I going to look spooky? I hope that stuff comes off. It's supposed to. <laughs> it's a pretty good paint job, I think. <laughs> We've got some black stuff here, too, Pop, if you want it. Oh, yeah. Hey, that's swell. We could do this for the eyes. Look at this, Harriet. I never thought I'd see the day when I'd sit here and let your father blacken your eyes. <laughs> How do you like that? Eyes, nose, and mouth. Yeah, that sounds like the usual arrangement. <laughs> well, I look at myself. <laughs> oh, boy, do I look gruesome. Pretty neat job, hey? Yeah, but where can I hide until Halloween? I suggest dunking your head into a nice bowl of soap and water. 
You can put that war paint on again when the time comes. I just want to leave it on until I rehearse my theme song. Your theme song? Sure. The ankle bone connected to the shin bone. Shin bone Hey, what do you do with the broom? Well, you know, Halloween, once a year, you usually celebrate. Holy smoke, what's wrong with your hand? It's all white. Looks a little undernourished. Oh, no, I just put a little Halloween makeup on Ricky's face. Kids are going to go out to trick-or-treat tomorrow night, and he's going to dress up as a skeleton. Oh. <laughs> Boy, Halloween is sure a lot of fun for the kids. Yeah, it really is. Gives them a chance to let off a little steam. As a matter of fact, we've had some pretty good parties the last few years. <laughs> well, they've been okay. Personally, I still think Halloween is mainly a night for kids, though. Come to think of it, I don't think I've heard anything about this year's party. What are the girls' plans, do you know? Oh, from what I understand, I'm not going to give a party this year. Oh, that's a shame. Don't you think we could talk them into it? Well, are you kidding? Let's leave well enough alone. Don't tell me you actually enjoy those horrible fiascos with those corny games and those idiotic costumes. <laughs> well, it is a lot of trouble at that. Well, you know Catherine spent a whole week making that outfit I wore last year? You mean at the Dunkles? No, that was the party before last. Last year's party was at the Randolphs, don't you remember? Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. Sure, that was the year I won first prize for the best costume. You won the first prize? Sure, you remember. I wore that devil's outfit. I thought you came dressed up as a fireman. Sure you did. Don't you remember you insisted you could jump out of the second-story window into the big apple tree? <laughs> <laughs> and I darn near made it, too. <laughs> no, I'm sure it was Halloween. Certainly. We were ducking for apples and somebody spiked the water. <laughs> you know, we've had some pretty good Halloween parties at that. You know, I never will forget the night that Mrs. O'Shaughnessy put that big sheet over her head and she said, I am the devil. I don't remember that. Sure you do. O'Shaughnessy didn't know who it was. He said, shake hands with me. I married your sister. <laughs> I think the least the wives could have done was to ask us before they called off this year's party. Oh, I don't think it's been called off, definitely. It's just they haven't made any plans for it. Well, right there is a reason why a lot of the parties haven't been so good. Well, what do you mean? Well, they haven't been properly organized. You can't just give a party haphazardly. You've got to organize it. You've got to plan the whole evening, hour by hour, step by step. Especially the entertainment. And by somebody who has a little talent for that sort of thing. That's exactly what I mean. So, you know what we could do... That is, if we wanted to turn this into a party tomorrow night, say, for instance, is to work out a schedule for the entire evening. Exactly what games we're going to play, what time we play them, exactly what time we eat, what time we dance, and that way we'd have the entire evening under control. Now, that's the sensible way to do it. And instead of having everyone dressed up in costumes and causing a lot of confusion, we could just have a couple of more talented fellas dressed up to keep things going. But wearing really clever costumes. That's right. So much better to have a couple of fellows with real talent rather than a whole room full of would-be comedians. It's rather short notice. What do you think we ought to wear? <laughs> what do you think we ought to do it? Are you kidding us? This is so great to me. I could dig up that devil's outfit I wore last year. Say, I have a devil's outfit up in the attic, too. We could put on a big sign, Aren't we devils? Uh, no, no. <laughs> oh, let's not worry about the costumes. We can think of something, Oz. One thing for sure, the entire evening will go off smoothly. I mean, none of this haphazard stuff. It'll all be planned step by step. Uh, do you think the girls will like the idea? Uh, I mean, us taking it out of their hands this way? Well, they'll be delighted. As a matter of fact, the more I think of it, I'll bet that's why they were stalling around, waiting for us to take over. <laughs> Boy, I can see us right now in our mad costumes, running around, taking charge of everything. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Thorny, I think there must be a trace of genius in our families. Oh, there's no doubt about it. A definite trace of genius with a faint flavoring of ham. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Thorny and I have whipped up what we think is a pretty darn good idea. Oh, what is it? Well, you know how each year around Halloween, you gals sort of throw together a little impromptu party? And you don't want us to give one this year. You said that before. Well, they've been pleasant enough little affairs. Everybody's had a pretty good time. But the big fault has been that nobody has taken the trouble to plan them correctly. But this year, the whole thing's going to be different. It's Thornberry and Nelson to the rescue. <laughs> May I ask a question? No, you're not even allowed to ask any questions. 
Thorny and I are going to take charge of all the operations. You gals are just allowed to relax and enjoy yourselves. Well, fine. That sounds like a wonderful idea. You know, I hate to brag, but I really think, Harriet, that this year's Halloween party is going to be the best one we've ever given. And why, do you ask? I'm not allowed to ask questions. No, no. Well, okay. <laughs> because this is going to be a well-planned party. And a well-planned party is a successful party. Thank you, Elsa Maxwell. Take care of the little things, and the big things will take care of themselves. Yes, that's very true. Now, first of all, we figured we'd work out a complete schedule for all the games. You can notice right from the start that we're going to plan everything with typical masculine efficiency. Pencil here. Here's your pencil. Oh, yes, I found it. <laughs> now, first of all, we thought of quotations. That's oh. always possible. Well, bring plenty of paper and pencils. All right. We start the evening off with, say, quotations. We play that from, uh, say, uh, 8.30 to 9.30. See, knowing the time you want to start a game and you want to finish it, that's one of those little details that make the whole party flow along smoothly. Then, uh, say at 9.30, we'll uh, bob for apples. It's always fun. Oh, please, ask the men not to wear any hair oil this time. <laughs> okay, no hair oil on the uh, apple ducking. Now we do that for, say, 15 minutes. Well, make sure you've got a clean shirt to wear, too. Oh, uh, I'll be wearing a costume. A costume? You mean everybody has to get a costume at the last minute? <laughs> Gee, I don't know quite how to explain this. This is one of the little surprises we had planned. Well, you'll probably find out about it. You see, you know how each year everybody gets together and just everybody puts on a, a silly costume and, and makes a darn fool of himself? Well, this year, just Thorny and I are going to do it. <laughs> I mean, just Thorny and I are going to wear the, the costumes. Well, what about the rest of us? Well, you just wear your regular clothes. Let's see, where was I? Oh, oh, here. Well, let's allow, say, uh... <laughs> Just checking over this list of things we're going to do at the party tonight. Mr. Thornberry and I are planning all the details, you know, all the entertainment and stuff like that. What kind of entertainment are you going to have? Well, that's what I'm checking over now. You boys know the secret of a successful party? Sure. Plenty of ice cream and cake, boy. Well, yes, refreshments are important, but the main thing is to plan the party carefully. A well-planned party is a successful party. Always remember that. You saw my skeleton outfit, didn't you, Pop? Oh, yeah, it's real neat. Yeah, we've all seen it. You've been wearing it around here for the past week. It makes you look real thin. People feel sorry for you, and that way you get more ice cream and cake. <laughs> How's party coming, dear? Oh, hi. Well, I've got it just about all planned. I thought we'd finish off the evening with a little dancing. Dancing? I hope they don't pull that stuff at our party, boy. What are you worried about? You can't dance anyway. You can, I suppose. Look, why don't you guys go outside for a while, huh? I've got a lot of work I want to do here. I think I'll put on my skeleton outfit. Come on, golden boy. <laughs> see. You have a novelty dance at one. That'll be fun. And the husbands all dance with their own wives. <laughs> records. Better decide on the records. You're really taking care of everything, aren't you? Well, the records are very important. Hi, folks. Oh, oh hi, Thorny. The back door was open, so I barged right in. Well, well good for you. In. What do you got in the box there? Well, I can show you, Oz, but uh, Harriet will have to leave the room. It's a surprise for tonight. Well, come on, Harriet. You heard the man. Okay, I'm leaving. I know when I'm not wanted. Well, come on. Let's see the big secret. Here, Oz. Take a look for yourself. What's this, new seat covers for the car? Oh, Oz, you know Sandy McTavish over at the lodge. Yeah? Well, he let me borrow the scotch outfit. Oh, how about this? Make a terrific costume for the party. Oh, this is wonderful, Thorny. Yeah, I left the bagpipes at home. Got bagpipes and everything, huh? Oh, certainly. <laughs> you ought to hear me wheeze out Annie Laurie. How about this? This is wonderful. Say, by the way, have you got the program all set? Well, yeah, just... Oh, I'm glad you reminded me of that. Here. I have a few items here that we need for tonight. I thought maybe you'd run down the store and pick them up, okay? Say, what am I, the errand boy? Well, you've got to do some of the work, too, Thorny. Just a short list. 
Uh, oh, here, we need some oranges here. What? Maybe about two dozen. I thought we'd play that orange game where you tuck it under your chin. <laughs> yeah. And then get some comic prizes for the game. There's somebody at the door. He better get the stuff out of yeah. here. Yeah. Comic prizes for the games. You know, just the long noses. Anything funny. Just use your own judgment, okay? Yeah, okay. I'll just see you later. And don't let Captain see the costume. No. <laughs> just a moment. Well, what have we here? Trick or treat. Trick or treat. Oh, well, you look like a couple of desperate characters. I'm afraid I'll have to give in. I just happen to have a couple of lollipops here. Okay, there you are. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Hey, wait for me. <laughs> Who is that? No, it's just a couple of neighborhood kids with that trick-or-treat stuff. You should have seen the cutest little guys. Oh. <laughs> Say, listen, if you've got just a minute, there's just one question I'd like to ask you about the party tonight. How are you please? I told you before, you're not allowed to ask any questions at all. The whole affair is in very capable hands. Well, I just want to know one thing. I know. All you're allowed to do is just put on your nicest party dress and be ready at 827. Thorny's stopping by for us then. Well, okay, dear. Oh, I'll get it. It's probably some more of the neighborhood kids. Oh, all right. Well, there's some lollipops on the chair there. Yes, I know. Trick or treat. <laughs> you heard me. Trick or treat. Don't you know this is Halloween? Well, yes, but aren't you a little old for this sort of thing? How old are you, anyway? Fifty-three. <laughs> ridiculous. Who ever heard of a full-grown man out trick or treating? My little boy's over in the next block, and I'm just giving him a hand. No, but you don't even have a costume. Naturally. What do you think I am, a child? <laughs> Good boy, please. <laughs> okay, I have some lollipops here. Here you are. Here's three lollipops. Only three? Well, of course. I mean, there are lots of other children around the neighborhood, too, you know. <laughs> hey, they're lemon. My kid just loves lemon lollipops. Thanks. Oh, good. How old is your little boy? Twenty-five. <laughs> That is really terrific. Oh, what happened to the bagpipes? Well, I was playing them a little while ago, and all of a sudden I had a blowout. <laughs> uh, are the kilts a little long? Should they come all the way down to your ankles like that? Well, I don't know, Oz, but after all, McTavish is about six foot six, and he's got very long legs. Oh, <laughs> Let's just see that the new look has finally come to Scotland. <laughs> I like my devil's outfit. Oh, that is sensational. That's terrific. I had to go in the closet to put it on. Harry doesn't know what I'm wearing, you know. Yeah, Captain hasn't seen my yet either. Boy, <laughs> I'll be moving for a big surprise. <laughs> uh, Harriet, we're ready. I'll be right down. Uh, say, Oz, do you mind if we go in your car tonight? Well, no, any particular reason. Well, <laughs> I've got these kills on. I'm afraid if I drive, it'll be a little drafty. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's well, good. Holy smokes! Hey, David, where do you see Pa? Like this, huh? Oh, hi. Thornberry. Oh, you didn't recognize me. Holy yet. smokes, what's going on in here? Look at Mr. Thornberry's dressed up like a woman. No, 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 I'm a Scotchman. Look at Pop, he looks like the devil. Yeah, so does Mr. Thornberry. Oh. <laughs> Have a good time at the party, Pop. Okay, yeah. take it easy now, boys. Okay, I'm all ready. Let's go. Uh, goodness <laughs> sake. Surprise. Oh, okay. I mean, what an outfit. Tony, what's the idea of the evening dress? Oh, these are just extra long kills. I'm a Scotchman. I didn't know it was a costume party. Oh, no, don't you remember I told you yesterday, Thorny and I are the only ones dressing up. So we'd better hurry. Catherine's waiting next door for us. Oh, yes, Harriet, we're going to take our car. Would you get it out of the garage? I want to go over with Thorny and get a look at Catherine's face when she sees that outfit. <laughs> and if she calls me Harriet, I'm not going. I'm not either. Uh, we'll meet you right up front, Harriet. Hey, wait a minute. Where are we going? Oh, to the party. No, I mean, whose house is the party being given at? She never did tell me. Well, now, wait a minute. You mean to say you girls haven't decided where the party's going to be held tonight? Well, no, you said you and Thorny were going to take care of everything, that the girls weren't to worry about a thing. <laughs> well, Thorny, didn't you decide where the party was going to be given? Oh, now, wait a minute. Don't blame this on me. What, you... Well, well Harriet didn't. <laughs> Isn't anybody giving a party tonight? 
Somebody always gives a party on Halloween. <laughs> Gee, I got the games all planned and everything. <laughs> well, turn around, Oz. We can still play pin the tail on the donkey. <laughs> Very well, there's one sure thing. We can't let the evening go to waste. <laughs> Say, wait a minute. I've got a wonderful idea. Such as what? Well, you've heard the slogan, movies are better than ever. We'll see a movie. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm not going to any theater with you two guys just like that. Who said anything about a theater? We'll go to my house. Hop along, Cassidy comes on in exactly five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pick up your skirt. Yes, it sure is. I suppose you think you're pretty smart. To be honest with you, yes. Fine thing. Make and believe you didn't know where the party was going to be held. Well, believe me, I didn't until about 4 o'clock. It wasn't until all us girls started talking it over and discovered that nobody was having one. So it's nice of Captain to have the party here, though, isn't it? Yes, it is. You know... I'll admit that I did overlook one little detail, but you have to admit that everything's going along real smooth, don't you think? So everybody having a good time and all? Well, that's what I said. It's a wonderful party. And you know why? Because everything has been planned. All the details have been arranged. A well-planned party is a successful party. Uh, let's see, it's a quarter of twelve. I think we'll have the refreshments at uh, about twelve thirteen. Fine. What are we having for refreshments? I beg your pardon? I said, what are we having for refreshments? All the girls have been asking me. Well, wait a minute. Don't tell me you girls haven't prepared refreshments. Of course not. This is your party. Don't tell me you've overlooked another little detail. <laughs> I really had you going there for a minute, didn't I? <laughs> you don't think we'd overlook the refreshments, do you? Where are they? Uh, uh, don't worry, dear. I'll take care of everything. Uh, you just go ahead and join the folks. I'm going to take care of a few more details. Need any help, sir? No, no, no. Just have a good time, and I'll be right back. All right. You say so. Hamburger Haven. Uh, I'd like to make a reservation for uh, uh, 31 people at uh, 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 1223. Yes, with the onions on top. Mommy, have you seen my gray jacket any place? Well, yes, it's right there in the living room. Oh. Why are you going downtown? Yeah, I'm going to market. Uh, before you go, you must admit we all had a good time at the party last night. We certainly did. Everybody had a wonderful time. No, thanks very much. Of course, I'll admit we did forget a couple of little details, but we didn't forget to do the dishes, and we didn't forget to clean up the place. No, it was very nice of you. You know, they say that men forget even more than women. <laughs> oh, Jiminy, that reminds me. I was supposed to meet Clara Randolph downtown. Oh, that clock must be stopped. What time is it? It's, uh... Where's my watch? <laughs> well, for goodness sakes, I left it on Thorny's coffee table. You know, I was timing the charades mm -hmm. last night. I'll get it for you. Oh. And that reminds me, I need some money. I don't know what you do without my wallet. Neither do <laughs> I. Wait a minute, where is my wallet? <laughs> oh. Remember, there were no pockets in the devil's outfit. I must have left it upstairs on the hall table. Oh, well, I'll get it for you. Oh. You sure there isn't anything else you've forgotten? Mm. Well, now, wait a minute, let me check. No, it's still on. <laughs> <laughs> the man at the door was played by William Teed. The little children were Jerry Mathers and Vicki Churchill.